Will these comics make good movies and television shows? Find out in my review right now. All right, we're back for episode 12. I made a mistake on the last one, I thought it was 11. Uh, I thought it was 10, but it's actually 11. So we're back here to talk about uh, comics because the new ones come out tomorrow. So uh, I'm finishing up my uh, thing here. So these are the rest of the books for last week. Uh, so we can kind of keep the, uh, the length of the show a little bit uh, smaller. So I kind of broke it up into two pieces. All right, so we're going to start with X-Men. Uh, so I don't usually collect X-Men, but we have this really weird coupling of Emma Frost and Tony Stark. Uh, and there was a huge attack on Krakoa, uh, which is, uh, from what I read in the past, it was like a living island uh, that they fought at one time. So anyway, and, and defeated, so I guess they just brought it back. Uh, but here, uh, you know, we see, we see the, um, the aftermath of the attack in Kokroa and uh, the Emma doesn't know who died. Emma's like in disguise for piece of this. I'm not sure what's going on. And Kitty, who becomes like a ninja, decides that Firestar is actually the traitor. So she goes after Firestar uh, and I'm a fan of Firestar from back in, you know, Spider-Man and his amazing friends back in the, I guess the early 80s. And her new costume just doesn't look good at all. So, uh, so then she talks Kitty off the fact that it's not really her. And uh, so here's, here's Kitty in ninja costume going to uh attack firestar and uh so it's, i guess she's being protected or whatever else so she's fighting these guys and uh you know there's there's firestar with short hair i don't i don't know and yellow and black i, I don't know that's not firestar i know and like, here's the mask that Firestar used to have, but I guess she gets the mask when she uses her powers? I don't know. It's really, really weird. And and she says, yeah, okay, I didn't do it. Then she's like, oh, okay. And that was about the extent of that. And then she has some kind of a conversation with uh, Emma Frost, who's in some kind of a disguise. I, I don't know what's going on. Uh, I guess I wasn't supposed to know what's going on. And uh, I guess she uh, needs him in a nut. Uh, that's Tony Stark there. And when he falls on the ground, they think that he's proposing, even though he's kind of holding his nuts. And I guess that's how the proposal thing kind of starts. So I don't know. It's really weird. I mean, when somebody's on the ground holding their nuts just because they're on their knees, somebody assumes that they're proposing. Yeah, I, I can definitely tell the difference from afar who's in pain and who's proposing. I mean, it's a huge difference. Uh, this is kind of trash, man. Uh, I, I, uh, I was expecting, I mean, I knew it was coming out of left field for them doing this. But this setup uh, is not good. And this is number uh, 26, The Fall of X. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I want to see the wedding just to see how stupid it is. But, yeah, this is, will it make a good film or television show? No, this is not a good X-Men story at all. Uh, I don't. I didn't see the the fight on Krakoa. Uh, Mike Spider Slayer said he liked that portion of it because a lot of people died, but they brought a lot of them back anyway, so it's like no big deal. So anyway, that's and of course, as you know, they uh, Miss Marvel they brought back like immediately <laughs> after she died, and then they made her an X Men. Everybody's like coming a mile away. All right, so Magic Order. 
So I've been. Uh, I thought the first five issues were pretty good. Uh, this is a Mike uh, Mark Millar, uh, and I really like the beginning of this. So you have uh, Mistress Albany or whatever. Uh, she immediately sacrifices herself right in the very beginning, and uh, she has set up all the other heads of the magic order throughout the United States. And basically set them on fire and sacrifice them all uh, in the in the shape of a pentagram. And she took the guy that was in the painting and brought him out. And she sacrifices herself. And she's like, "Yeah, I, I wanted to be dead anyway." And that, that's pretty cool. That she just kind of worms away. She just falls into worms. And um, but then uh, he goes to basically kill everybody. And here's this two-page spread showing the pentagram on the United States from space. And there's an actual astronaut going, what the hell is that? That's a little weird. That was a little weird. But I guess they wanted to do some point of point of view. And then, really, Mark, we have to have space whales? It's bad enough it's in Star Wars now, much less anything else. We should not have space whales. So anyway, we have a big... Fight coming, and Cordelia shows up with whole, her whole army and says, I'm now controlling your army, and I like all that. And then it just goes off the rails, man. It just goes off the rails. She says, well, I'm going to get the king. So she goes off into this other guy's house, says, I need to talk to you. And then we go into this backstory of the king and how they swap places with the other bad guy that was in the painting. And she hands him... Uh, a typewriter? <laughs> she hands him a typewriter so that she can change everything and he becomes the king again and then goes uh, they just talk. He just basically talks the bad guy off and then they hug and he's like, I'm sorry, I don't know what. and that's the end. <laughs> uh and then they all celebrate uh, with the new order of all these kids becoming the new order because the order is dead. And that's the end of it. So I don't think it really stuck the landing. I really like the world. I think the world really works. But I don't think it's that stuck the landing in, in the least. Um, so I think I would have to, a better ending. Uh, goes, well, I, of course, I never read the other volumes. So I don't know what this swap thing was in this king that would had you know did a regular life and you know took over his identity and he says uh, you know I, I'd like to be a better man and he's like you are a better man that's the uh, you're the template I took to have my life and my grandchildren and my wife and blah 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 yeah so no uh, we'll make a good film or television show probably not unless. That, not that particular story. I like parts of the story. I like her going up against her brother and all that stuff. And, you know, the brother for us being a complete dick. <laughs> but the rest of it, the whole ending, no. Uh, but he has a deal with Netflix. So if, he, if anybody's going to get anything made, it's going to be Mark Millar. So. All right, moving on to Conan. Uh, so I haven't collected a Conan book in a long time. And this is now done by Titan instead of being done by Marvel. Uh, Marvel had the rights for quite a while. And this has a very old school feel. This is like artwork look from like the 70s, which was when really Cullen was at its peak. And uh, so I guess I didn't get issue one. So this is only this is issue two. But I caught up pretty quick. And uh, he's uh, Conan's out with this uh, with this chick, Brisa or whatever, uh, who was a pick. And I guess the picks are have become undead. Whenever they die, they gather them all together, and then I guess they they're zombies. Uh, so we have a lot of we have some zombie fighting in here, but we have a lot of lot of text. This is very very text heavy, and I mean there's a he has sex with her, blah blah blah, because originally she wanted the sword, and she pulls her knife on him, and he's like, hey, if you're gonna pull the knife. You better use it. There's no nudity in here, but there's definitely sex. And, um, I mean, yeah, that's 
that right there, that panel alone is very, very old school. So uh, they go, they realize that the whole, the pick sort of city is gone. She's like the only one. So he goes to Samaria, uh, Samaria, I guess it is with a C. And uh, I guess he has to fight some of his own guys. Uh, I mean, that's a really nice spread right there. So he went there to look for help, but they're getting killed by the picks too. So they, uh, uh, so all of his old friends are now zombies attacking him, and with the help of Brisa, who is also wounded, uh, he ends up uh, killing them. I mean, it looked like he was being overwhelmed, but I guess not. And there's a lot of head choppings, and then they they find this. Uh, tower and that's where it ends right now so uh aside from it being text heavy for really no reason uh the look and feel of this is really good it really feels like conan uh so i uh, i recommend this book uh pretty highly i'm probably going to continue it and uh yeah it would be great to see a new conan movie uh the last one wasn't very good uh, I think it was Jason Momoa <laughs> that played it. Uh, I mean, it had its moments, but for the most part, it wasn't very good. And, uh, yeah, I'd like to get, you know, the pronounced Conan right now was Arnold Schwarzenegger. And that was and that was only really only the first one. The second one was with Grace Jones wasn't even very good. Uh, then, we, of course, we had The Scorpion King, which was basically Conan. Uh, but I'd really love to get a new Conan movie out there uh this is pretty cool i don't know zombies are kind of overdone so i don't think a zombie conan movie would make a good movie um you know i i, I love james earl jones as the villain with the snake and the whole bit that was really good so i don't know we'll see what happens but uh i'd love to get a new conan movie out there this particular one i don't know again zombies let's see where it goes but the zombie thing doesn't really set me off uh, probably nobody else too for a conan thing let's get something new in there so then we'll uh, get into barnstormers this is uh one of the last ones here so barnstormers was the uh book about the uh, it's a, it was a little it was a little meh, it was only a three this is only three issues but they were like double size issues but this one's five dollars and it was only uh 12 uh, 26 pages with the other ones, I think, were 30-something pages. So this wasn't even a full thing. There's a lot of, like, artwork in the back showing, you know, their development and stuff like that. Uh, the actual story is only 26 pages. So only, like, half of this book is actual story. Uh, but anyway, so this is really the, the close-up of the storyline where Bix, uh, and I forgot the other woman's name, uh, I want to say Taysa, but that's not it. It's uh, Lisa or something. I forgot, I forgot her name. Um, but anyway, so... Oof, how can I forget her name? Uh, Tilly. So Bix and Tilly were on the run. Uh, she, he, in the beginning, he was trying to look for money by doing stunts with his plane. Uh, this is like World War One type planes with their biplanes. And uh, he ends up ruining her wedding, but that was okay with her because she wanted out of that thing anyway because she was, it was like a uh, an arranged marriage. And he was very abusive and she wanted out of there anyway. So as soon as all that was destroyed, she waited for him to come back to her plane and, and basically forced him to take her with him. They ended up falling in love and she ended up doing tricks on the wings while he flew and the ex the ex fiance could not get over it. He hooked up with a cop and said that she was abducted and they followed them around uh, until he basically threatens to hurt the dude if she doesn't come with him and she comes ends up going with him. But uh, uh, the dude picked her up anyway and she ended up shooting the, uh, the ex fiance so now they're on the run for murder and uh, the cop uh, and they burned down. A, they didn't burn down the house. The other, the ex-fiance did, but blamed it on them. 
So there was a whole bunch of problems, but they were on the run from multiple uh, accusations. And here the cop catches up with them, but they end up hooking up with a whole other show. So the, nobody can really get to them. And of course, we also have a mob of bounty hunters because there's a price on their head. Uh, so once the the plane peels off, all the bounty hunters and whatever else, all of the, the general public that's looking for the reward, it goes after them and shoots the plane down. And they realize that it was uh, a fake out and it was one of the other uh, barnstormer guys, uh, a lot of performers that took it, which is, I'd say that's pretty brave. He knows he, knows he was going to get shot at and he decided to change planes with them anyway. And meanwhile, the cop knew what the hell they were doing and it was not faked out at all. And as they're about to take off in the other plane, they, uh, he catches up with them and the guy asks, he said, would you change anything? Knowing what you know now, would you change anything about the wedding and taking her and stuff like that. And he looks at her and he goes, no, I wouldn't change a thing. So whatever happens now happens now. And, uh, so I guess he's touched by that. And I guess they kind of fake, we really don't know how they fake their deaths or anything like that. Cause all we do is to see the plane take off, but he tells the press that they're dead. Uh, and they're taking off, I guess, to go to Cuba, I, I guess. I don't know, because he said they had to go beyond Florida, so I would assume that would be Cuba. So they they power, they do fueled up and went, and according to everybody else, they're dead. So, I mean, it's the storyline is great, and the characters are great. Scott Snyder did a really good job, but the whole ending, I'm not, I'm not sure that's very cinematic. Maybe all right for a, for a, I mean, I felt kind of let down for the ending. Um, I don't know what I expected, but it was it wasn't that. Um, so I felt kind of let down. So they I think they'd have to revise the ending a little bit uh, to make this into a film. Uh, but it's definitely not a TV show. It's more of a film because it's very very contained. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed it. Uh, but I just I don't think that one um, makes the ending either. All right, so uh, that's it for me, guys. Um, but make sure to like and subscribe. Um, I am looking to grow the channel. So thank you all for your support and uh, and making this, uh, you know, a thing that I can do on a regular basis. But I, I'm not making any money on it, of course. But I do enjoy putting out uh, stuff about comics and movies. And uh, I'd like to get back to my board games, but I haven't, I haven't really had a chance to do that because I will be launching... Uh, Lords of LA, LA number two, because I've been working on the Kickstarter for that. So I'm pretty close. And uh, so to, to push my other stuff, uh, and I, these will be part of the Kickstarter as well. Right now, this is only on Amazon. Uh, and I don't think you can get the hard covers on Amazon anyway. It's just, just the soft covers. And, uh, but anyway, so this is my fantasy novel, uh, Tales of Rabinor, The Iron Witch. I will be working on the sequel someday. <laughs> I have some of the stuff laid out. I just haven't had a chance to write it all. Uh, I, I am writing a new comic with um, Mike Spider Slayer, and we, uh, we're we getting notes on that right now. The script is done for the first issue, uh, and I'd like to get some of that stuff done. But uh, I am getting Lords of L.A., the, the fourth issue, done right now, which is part of number two. So issue two, in fact, I might as well just show that right now. So this is issue one, but it's a double-sized so it has issues one and two in it. So the next one will have issues three and four, but it'll be number number two. And uh, that's my vampire mob in the 50s. And then this is my sci-fi, Destiny Roar. It's a four novel series. And this is an adaptation of the first novel. And it's a whole 150 pages and has basically the entire story in it. But there's plenty of aliens and fighting and uh, twists and all that stuff as well. So that's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Give me the thumbs up. Give me the middle finger. <laughs> Whatever you want to give me. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.